So. <coughs> Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel. I'm Simon the Savage Reads, and today I'm joined again by Mercedes, or might be not be again. This might go live first. Who, Who knows? knows? Oh, spooky. And we're just going to have a little bit of a reading chat. Yeah. Because I realise it's something that I don't do when I'm with my friends that read. I'll either do like a tag, well, I don't do tags anymore. Or I'll do like a choose these books on my shelf, but I don't actually talk about reading. Just general reading yeah. stuff, yeah. We've been talking about it quite a lot while you've yeah, been here. Yeah, we have, yeah, yeah. We don't talk about anything else. No, that's all we've got in common. That's all we've got in common, yeah. books. Might talk about cats for a few minutes, yeah, yeah. maybe the odd tattoo. I thought what we'd start off by doing is talking about currently reading because mm. that will bring up some questions that I've got for you. Okay. Questions that I've always meant to ask. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I've only got one. <laughs> you always only read one, don't yeah. you? Yeah, and it's Washington Black by, I can't say her name, Essie Edugian. I think that's, that's right. Good. I think that's right. That's such a beautiful edition. Isn't it? But this is obviously not the one that I'm reading because yeah. I've got the proof in my bag down. So this is all about a slave called Washington Black. I'm only at the beginning, but it starts off with how he's ended up on the sugar plantation. There's a new master and it's kind of horrific. But what's wonderful is he's got this gorgeous relationship with this other slave who's been there years and she kind of looks after him but something not very nice has happened to her. I'm only on page 26, so that's not a spoiler. So that's what I'm reading right now, and I'm reading it because it's on the book list. Yeah, yeah. But it was also on my most anticipated books of the year list because yeah, yeah. I loved Half Blood Blues, which was a book that didn't sound like my cup of tea. World War Two, uh -uh. and jazz, mm. um, I don't like music or art in yeah, books. Yeah, I don't. So, yeah. that's something we have in common. Yeah, I really don't like music or art in books. No, I just, I think it's like, I want to see a painting and judge it myself, not have a character judge it for yeah, me. Yeah, 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 completely. And also, I don't think you can explain music in a book very well. Yeah, agreed. What are you reading, Mercedes? So, and I've, I haven't got dust jackets any of these because I take them off and I have that That's why. my bag. No, see, mine's, is, mine's just a slightly more extreme version of that, my proof thing. A much more extreme version. Um, so this is Everything Under by Daisy Johnson. And this has been long listed for the Mambuka as well. Um, but again, it was one of my most anticipated releases of the year because I really enjoyed her short story collection. Ben, which you enjoyed as well, didn't I you? I did. What are you predicting you'll give it? Four stars, I think. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That is good. And like, I've got it there. Bear in mind that my five stars is like non existent at the moment. Four stars is. Oh, we'll talk about your five, no, yeah. no five star years shortly. Okay. It's going to be like therapy. Yeah. Oh, what's this book, Mercedes? This is Future Papes of Ireland by... You've got to finish one. I've got two proofs. Darren Martin. Good for you. They're just like immortalised on your bookshelves forevermore, never to be read. Yeah. Sad again. Times. No, never to be read again. No, but the first time, because you haven't read the hardback. I only said they've not given me fingered ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry. moving on. We were buddy reading this. Ah, uh, still. Yeah. Sort of. With so, Lauren. So we started it only a week ago. And I got to page 80, and to be honest, I really enjoyed the start. And then the last couple of chapters, I was a bit like, mm, not disliking it, but wasn't desperate to carry on. And then I didn't read for a couple of days, and then I got on the train and just felt like reading something else. So. Do you find, and this was my problem with this one, not my problem with this one, it was my, my problem yeah, yeah. with this one, not aimed at the book. Yeah. If I'm busy and I don't get to a book for a couple of days, something happens that detaches me from it a bit. Yeah, I do. And I'm a bit like... It's not the book, it's me. Yeah, completely. I and I had say. that a little bit, so I just had to for force myself to get back into it, which wasn't a hardship, because yeah. when I was in it, I was loving it Well, again. I'm going to have to, because I know when I finish everything under on the train, I'm going to want to pick up something new. But I shouldn't, because I know I am enjoying that. And it's, you have got five hours. I've got five hours on the train, yeah. Five and a half, actually. Even worse. I'm going to read it on the train home, so it's so tiny. Instead of reading Future Pets of Ireland. Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss, because I'm very excited about Don't it. Don't dedicated to this bloody room. <laughs> <laughs> I am excited about this one because apparently it's quite more like Cold Earth, which is the only Sarah Moss I've read. The worst one. Well, this is supposed to be like it. Not like, not as in it's, I don't think it's going to be a worst one. <laughs> what I mean is I think it's about that sort of yeah, and also, prehistoric, isn't it about a bog child? Yeah, also it's acceptable that it's a worst one because it is a debut and it feels like a debut. So like when I say worst one, I mean it feels like a debut. Her worst one out of some really good ones. Yeah, I love her saying. books. I've read them all on that. I haven't. You disappoint me, like, honestly. <laughs> Daily. Yeah. Night Waking, Tidal Zone, and Strangers in Iceland, which is her memoir, are some of my favourite books. All by one author. I could, so I could feel Amazing. the disappointment coming across then. Um, so they're the books. How do you manage to multi-read? Because I just can't do it. I mean, I'm not a very good multi-reader because what ends up happening is I focus on the one I'm enjoying the most and then other ones get left. Right. Um, I'm better at it if one of them is a non-fiction. Um, if one of them is a short story collection, but even then, inevitably, yeah, that's what I end up doing. I end up focusing on the one I'm enjoying more, and um, 
ignoring the others, which is quite bad. Well, I just had this thing where like, I tried to do it with multiple books with totally different themes, couldn't do it. And then also I tried to do like non-fiction and fiction and I just end up veering to the fiction all the time. Mm. And then I was trying to do this thing of reading a short story before bed every day because I thought that's a good way of getting because I do love short stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you'll get a collection that has a short story that's 75 pages yeah, and halfway through I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not because the book's boring but just because I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I find is that if you've got a whole day and you know you're not going to get much up done and then read it and like you're just free, then I, I want to be reading more than one book because I don't really like re finishing a book in the in one sitting, weirdly. Oh, really? Like, if it's really short, then I accept that there, some of oh, them... Like, this is sorry, probably, Ghost Wall. This is probably written to be read in one sitting, so that's fine. Yeah. But books that are longer, I think they're written not to be read in one sitting. Yeah. And so having sort of an, at least a night's sleep in between gives you time to one sort of how to think about what's, yeah. what's going on and also to anticipate and be excited. But also I think sometimes with a big book that you really enjoy, like Sarah Waters, mm. You don't want it. I mean, you've read most of those in one sitting. Yeah, they are big yeah, chunks, yeah, but yeah. I actually like eking those out. But then there's that weird point, isn't there, where you're like, I really want to finish this, yeah. but I really want to keep this yeah, going for as long as Yeah, completely. And her books are really like that. But so, so that's why I do like reading multiple books because it stops me from hammering through something and it, it allows me to make it be over a few days. Yeah. But that's I think interesting. You used to be like it. I don't know why I am now, really. Well, because I don't. I think I don't hammer through books as much as I used to, but I think I do still get through them. But what I think is good about doing YouTube or blogs or anything like that is mm. you can remember them a little bit more. But also, oh, and I'm doing it actually now with my vlogs where I do my initial thoughts. But actually, sometimes it's quite nice to yeah, after yeah. a few weeks because if I'm recommending stuff, I'll have that initial possible excitement about a book mm. that might fade. Or there might be something like The Hoarder, which you recommended, yeah, yeah. that I can still not stop thinking about. Yeah, yeah. I still really think about that character. And also because it was a standout book in the fact that it was so different, so saints. No, that's why it is really interesting, I think, to, to get both perspectives. One being the instant, yeah. oh my God, I've just finished it. And two being, I've, I've had to think about it for a few weeks. Because there's books I look back on. Well, I did reviews where I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And now I'm like... Dross. And that like that isn't the last couple of years. I'd say that's the first sort of two years of my channel yeah. where perhaps, you know, I started reading again after a long time and not reading I sort of was, was developing my taste. And I've grown you know, as well, like I've just grown up in those years yeah. and things have happened. You know, the last few years I'd say my my feelings haven't changed that much but I've not thought you've grown up very much enough, No, so maybe that's, that's probably why. I haven't. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> We're also talking about the fact that there's a type of book, and we can't name how you describe it, yeah, yeah, but I'm realising they're the sort of books I love, and it's your Joanna Cannons, your Sarah Waters, your Caris Brays, your Jess Kidsnow, I think. Yeah. And what it is, is like, I don't know, how, how would you describe them? They're... Because well, I hate I the word cosy. I can't think of anything to describe them. All I, can just, all I can describe is the list of things that connect them. Okay, go on. Which is... Regardless of when they're set, they're but all British. I should say one of the things that um, reasons I put this out is because me and Mercedes have this thing where we either really, really love the same book, yeah, yeah, or we have the literally the yeah, most popular. Completely, and these are the sort of books we yeah, generally we really agree love. on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're a publisher and you listen now, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're usually all British. Well, they are all British. No, just kids are Irish. Well, UK. Okay. Yeah. So, so they United f Kingdom. Yeah. So they feel, you know, they feel recognisable yeah. to us. Um, Regardless of the time zone, they all have a feeling of a certain type of nostalgia because they're even so if, familiar. Well, also, even though I wasn't alive in some of them, yeah. like the 1970s, I think there's something about the heritage in them Completely. and the nostalgia. Feels, and the, yeah. yeah. Um, they're all about working class people. Yes. Which I think is a massive reason why I love them. Yeah. Um, also, weirdly, I think they're books for me that have a slight northern spirit. Yes. Or like a north... There's something... Yes. Because being from the north as well, I, I genuinely think northern people, they've got this certain quality about them. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about yes actually. There's a certain comedy. Yes. And a certain self-deprecation, but not it's not humiliation. No, it's, it is oh, just I, like I think a, it's a sort of an irony. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. it. Irony. Yeah. And they all feel really nostalgic. And, and weirdly, even when something awful is happening that could be really upsetting, they all still feel sort of cosy. Which, yeah. which the word cosy, like yeah, it feels dismissive and it really isn't because these are some of my favourite books. Yeah, these are some of my favourite books. I don't know. I just I think they're phenomenal and I yeah. love these sort of books. Like yeah. they are my they are my Maybe favorite. we need to call them um Savage Mercy literature. Yeah. <laughs> God, that sounds really terrifying. <laughs> I expect to see that section yeah. of bookshop soon. Yeah. But there is, there's something really nice. And I think what I've realised, and I think going forward, I want to read more books like that 
I'm a bit over pompous, sort of windbag kind yeah, of literary yeah. books. Probably the only reason I feel bad reaching for books like that is because it, there's like generally there's not much diversity there at all. No. It's what I know. I am British. Yeah, no. I am working class. I but am, maybe you know, that is so... why it chimes on the same way. Wavelength, like I love books set in India. I don't read enough of them. I really mm. want to get into more Japanese fiction. Yeah, yeah. Because when I read it, I really love it. But there's that certain lovely tingle when you get Completely. right into that. There's writing. lots of different types of books I enjoy, but these type of books, I'd say, they're at the heart of what yeah. uh, that I get a feel when I open it, and I just want to smile and be like, "This is it." Five star books, and you're not having a five star mm. year. How's your reading year going, Mercedes? I mean, not great in terms of quantity and quality. I guess, like. I don't know how many I've read. I think it's like 40 something, which for me in month eight is abysmal. Um, and uh, people always, whenever people say stuff like this in videos, people are like, oh my God, that's loads. And I'm not saying it isn't for, for other people. What I'm saying is, is I don't really have any other hobbies. When I get home from work, work's done and I have hours in a week to read. And so to have only read about 40 is quite poor. And it means to me that I've spent a lot of time doing other things. And I don't even know what those other things are. Like that's a good thing sometimes. Yeah. You know, I, I think I think what it is, is I had a bit of a period last year where life was a bit stressful and I read a few rubbishy books and that culminated in me being like, I'm just going to take a while out from reading and I read like maybe one book in November, two in December. And then I think it's habit forming mm. and I think I fell out of the habit of sitting and spending a couple of hours each evening reading and I still haven't really managed to get myself back into well, it. Because that's what a lot of people say to me, Simon, how do you read so much? But I schedule in so normally, if you want to... Yeah. <laughs> I'd read for like I'd literally read for an hour in the morning before I go to work. Oh, do you? See, yeah, I get God. up early. I'd never get do that. Ready, I'm so lazy. Have my breakfast, come up here with a cup of tea and read. I've well, I say an hour, maybe it's forty-five minutes. Sometimes That's half an hour really depending good. on how I'm going. Then obviously I read on the bus to work. I read on my lunch break because I go and hide in the library. See, I don't. Okay. Which is quite nice. Yeah, that's really well, nice. Because I'll eat my lunch at my desk while I'm working yeah. and then I'll go and hide and read. And then when I get home, Chris isn't home for another two to three hours sometimes. Yeah. So that's a massive chunk of time that I read. Yeah. But not everybody's that lucky to yeah. have that time. Well, I never read till about 7pm. I get up just in time, usually don't have breakfast. Then on the bus, I'm just like, too tired really to read. So I, I, I listen to an audiobook, I guess. And then I always go for lunch with colleagues. And then... I get home, Johnny's there, we have dinner, we watch something, and then I'll, that's when I'll read. My big problem sometimes is because me and Chris will, will get into an addictive TV series, and then I'm like, I'll oh, just want more, I'll oh, just want more. I'll, I'll bang that a whole can, series. Yeah, that can night. really kill. Yeah. Well, that's what happened with Future time. Popes. I started watching this Hidden, Welsh which you recommend me. called Hidden, which is pretty dark but good. Um, and I watched three hours one night and five hours the next night after work. That's why I didn't read anything. You think in general as readers, we all assess how much we're reading, and we kind of we're not competing with other people. You're almost competing with yourself from previous years. Because if you know you read loads and then you have a phase where you're not reading loads, I think sometimes I overanalyze why I'm not reading. Yeah, but I think it is, the only reason we do this is because we record it. Because prior to me having booktube and prior to me having Goodreads, I wouldn't have noticed. Yeah. I'd have just known I've read a lot of good books this year. I, think I wouldn't have had a clue how much I'd read. Yeah, it's weird. Like I read completely by whim in mm. July binned all of that off because I was like, I just I just want to read what I want for a little bit. Yeah. I read the most books I've read in ages. Yeah. Not all of them were amazing, but I just read loads. And I think it's because I was not putting on a, like, I have to do that because that it's that time of year. I have to do that because yeah. I get into these little habits that I need to break a little bit, I think. Yeah. And that, But that said, I am now sort of sat there thinking, could I read just women for next year because Liverpool's having the year of women? Is that something I could physically yeah, do? Yeah. But then actually I look at some of the books I've read this year, like John Boyne, like actually the... Future Pokes of Ireland, which I think is going to keep growing on me, the Future yeah, Pokes yeah, one. Yeah. I've got a few issues with it, but I, I think it will keep growing on me. I don't know, it's that tricky one, isn't it? It's weird, because then the other day I was like, oh, Simon, you've got 2019 books, so why don't you start reading them now to get ahead? But actually, I can't have a conversation with anyone about them. No, that's really ahead. Sorry, I'm just going to have a sip, because I'm a bit I'm, thirsty. I'm feeling thirsty. I think one thing, because I, I was getting a lot of criticism, Simon, when you first started blogging, you were really, really into modern classics, and I really, really was. So was I. My I'm taste just channel. isn't there anymore yeah, so the much. Same. And also... The books that we were talking about, those books that I like to find with the working class voices, are, they tend to be newer books because in the past yeah, they yeah. didn't really, not so many working class books go out there. That said, if I find a working class modern classic, I'll love it yeah, yeah, yeah. because it'll have that nostalgia element again. Yeah. But I also, but then there is part of me that needs to be aware that like, I would like to read. So this year I've binged quite a lot on historical fiction. Mm. I can feel that's not waning, but I feel like I've fed that now. But I'm, my brain's starting to go to dystopic fiction. Yeah, and I'm starting yeah. to think, oh, maybe I want to do a bit of dystopic. And I think that's just the way you are. You yeah, change yeah. as a reader all the time. Yeah, definitely. Just like some books that I would give five stars four years ago, now yeah, I probably would only give like two or three. Because 
my taste has completely yeah, changed. Yeah, or yeah. it's not even my taste, it's what you're reading. It's just where you're at. Yeah, yeah. That's why I don't let books that arrive bully me because I know well, it's all about this time. This is what I want to know. So you have, is, is this bookshelf here that people can't see, the new books? Yeah, so they're all the books that have come out and this, this year is, and then they're 2019 books there. And then this is backlist. Yeah. And some of that stuff's only a year old. It's well, just, no, it's not even, I think some of it's really, really old, but also these are books that people think that these are all books that I've been sent and it's not true. No, no, Most no, of them, of them are books that I bought yeah, myself yeah, yeah. Um, and kept over the years because like I've got Anne Tyler over there and I will do, I promise I will do my bookshelf tour at some point. I've been saying that for so many months, but oh, like effort. I've got loads of Anne Tyler Taylor, but it's because I read her and really loved two and then went and bought them all because yeah, they were in yeah. charity shops and I was saying to you that's nice I used to have a charity shop next door to me mm -hmm. not next door but a couple doors up where you could get five books for a pound that's ridiculous which was ridiculous but as somebody who I wasn't well off then or anything yeah yeah I mean I'm nightmare now I work in a library I come yeah. home with loads of library books yeah yeah which has reminded me I need to take some back in today but how do you choose like so I have about 200 unread books and I find it stressful to choose my next read how do you find it? Because I'd walk in here and be like, oh my God, well, you there's get out, so like, many. No, I love it, but <laughs> I wouldn't be able to choose. I know, I find it quite easy, because if I'm... Do I'm you always just think, walk over to the new shelf? No, not always. But, but most of the time? Predominantly, yeah. Yeah. But I think that's the magpie element a little well, bit. I'm the same, because I predominantly read, and I, this year I wanted to stop that, and I haven't managed it. I still predominantly read my But then, books. I know like this Christmas I'm probably going to read Fingersmith. Yeah. And what I wanted, because also the weird thing is, my back catalogue books tend to come out more in the autumn. Yeah, which is a same. weird thing. Well, I, I'm really a seasonal reader because I. I'm like a squirrel. If you know that you like a voice, like hold it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I hold am, it away. because I don't, I really don't like summer. Um, and I know we've had lots of complaints about the, the temperature, but even in a general summer, it's my unhappiest but season. This summer has been. Yeah, it's been awful. Horrendous. And that's really slowed down my reading because mm. Johnny and I have said, you know, sat in the flat, usually my happy place is on the sofa under a blanket. I've got a candle lit um, and it's grey outside yeah. and a bit stormy. And it just feels really cosy, and it hasn't felt like that. And for me, reading is a cosy, warming yeah. thing. And you it said cosy one more time. Cosy, 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 cosy. <laughs> um, and it just doesn't go off summer. And loads of books I'm so excited about that are like set in colder countries mm. or set during the winter or autumn. I haven't read because I'm like I don't want to spoil them with summer. Well, interesting. I've seen that some people on Instagram are reading icy books to cool them down, and some, oh, I no, can't. It doesn't no, work for me. No, I sort no. of need to be. So that's why, like for me, this is the perfect time to read Catherine Hall's Proof of Love because it's about heat wave. Yeah, yeah. Or Johnny candles are trouble with goats and sheep etc yeah. i do sort of read along the seasons that i'm in i do a bit like i like to read about the cities that i go and visit yeah yeah I go yeah, that's nice. yeah yeah i like yeah. doing that but i think as well um there is just something about when you i just think i'm becoming more and more of a fan of contemporary fiction but i again i feel like that's a bad thing but it's not no no i find it intriguing as to how you saw but yeah i, I did just... try and do them in publication day but actually that's not helped me at all it it's puts out. more pressure on yeah, it, I think. Yeah, completely. I used to do that. Although, and it me out. having the 2019 one separate is quite nice because I would like to get a little bit ahead sometimes. Yeah, but I feel like November is a good time to start reading 2019 books. It's only August. I don't think people want to know masses about books they can't get their hands on. I, I think yeah. the halls are great for that. They're fine with it. But if you start talking about those books all the time, people are like, mm. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I am looking forward to, actually, no to end on? is now that Chris has got back into reading, mm. and he's literally started another book last night, so I'm very excited, because yeah. this never happens. We're gonna start having the fire on that's soon. That's so exciting. I'm in so the jealous. lounge, both of us, under our like cozy, Yeah, that's, that's a perfect. cozy. We need another word for cozy, there yeah, must there be other words. Word. Um, but yeah, under our blankets, and that's gonna be like, I can't wait. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Um, so basically, the moral of this video is, read what you want when you want, Yeah. and don't stress about it. Yeah, completely. Ooh. Thanks. I was going to say thanks, thanks to us for being helped for them. No, <laughs> I don't mean it like that. But that's that was like therapy. Yeah, that was. Maybe that's what I can't start doing, reading therapy with Simon. Yeah, you could. You could charge people for it. Anyway, we're going to go now, but we'll speak to you all. Mercedes will speak to you on her channel, which I'll link down below. Yeah. And then um, I'll speak to you on my channel, which you're on. So yeah. I'll speak to you all later. Bye. Bye.